hello what's up youtube in this very simple tutorial i want to show you how you can easily use your mixer brush tool and how to understand where to mix and the directions you have to move the mixer brush tool every single time you're trying to retouch your images in just photoshop and right now i'm using photoshop 2020 and i want to show you because so many people tend to ask me how i'm able to get that nice and rich skin texture and I want to show you in the very first step what I tend to do and the right Gaussian blur radius I tend to do. Remember, if I told you misunderstand this step, you're not going to be able to get the best. If I told you use the Mr. Bash tool or even use the lasso tool technique as you're doing your frequency separation. So if I told you misunderstand the step I'm about to show you, you're not going to be having very nice and crisp skin textures in your images. So without further ado, let's see let's get started with this very tutorial so i'm just going to come right here to my photoshop and i'm using photoshop 2020 right here and what i'm going to do basically i'm going to come and i play my frequency separation actions and if at all you don't have this you can support the channel by purchasing my retouching essentials pack that is going to fasten or quicken your skin retouching process so that you don't go through creating those layers of frequency separation from the very start so i'm just going to come to the actions right here and i'm going to play my 16-bit frequency separation action so i just want you to look right here if at all you play the wrong frequency separation action for a wrong image it means that it is also going to be affecting the amount of textures that you may be remaining with in your image so make sure you look at the bit depth of the image and you play the right frequency separation action so you can say i have 8 bit and 16 bit and for this case i have 16 i'm just going to come and I play my 16 bit frequency separation action and those interested in buying my retouching essentials pack the link is going to be in the description of this fair video so i'm just going to kind of um, play my action right here so this is the most important step i was telling you at the start of this tutorial because when you mess up on this step it means the overall retouch or your retouch image is going to be messed up when it comes to details or textures so usually when you play the action or, or even when you're creating your layers this is the point when you put in the amount of gaussian blur in the low frequency layer so i'm just going to drag this right here and i take the radius all the way to 0 0.1 so this is when you are looking at the image so make sure the preview option is on and this option you can either zoom in or zoom out and you click and drag so this is more of a refresh point for the textures that you want to deal with or eliminate from the image so just come to the radius right here and simply left click so this is going to be different from or different because your image may be having or your, your photos may be having different levels or textures in the image so i'm just going to come to the radius and i simply left click on the radius so you have to take this up the point when you're just starting close out on these details that's when you have to stop so in your images make sure you click through and you look for an area that has more skin details than the rest of the image meaning when you're blurring out these details completely it means that even the rest of the textures all the details will have been lost in that case so i'm just going to come to the radius and i simply left click and i look for this point right here so you left click and drag as you're looking right here so you just take it up just like that up up to when the details are just starting to disappear from your image so at around six that's when my details are just starting to get lost so you have to stop at that point when your details are just starting to disappear or get lost from the image and just simply hit ok and you can proceed with other steps that regard frequency separation but if at all you have the action everything is going to be automatically or automated for you and you are just going to go straight into setting up the mixer brush tool and working on the skin or blending it so we are done with this step and which is the most important step so just going to go in to the very important aspect for today's tutorial and that is how to use the mixer brush tool and understanding the directions to move your mixer brush tool 
So I'm just going to turn off the black and white color. Or let me simply delete it. And remember when you're working with images in frequency separation and we want to involve skin tones and we just want to unify the skin tones, we do that on the low frequency layer. So just come right here and you select the layer that is containing the colors or the skin tones in your image. And that is the low frequency layer right here. So we have selected the low frequency layer. So next thing is going to be setting up our mixer brush tool. So just come under the brushes. If at all you have new versions of Photoshop and simply right click on the brushes and you get your mixer brush tool. If at all you have older versions of Photoshop, you can simply come right down here and right click and you look for your mixer brush tool under this. So this is why you have to set up the mixer brush tool. And usually I prefer you come to the hardness and make sure the hardness is at zero, meaning your mixer brush tool is going to be a soft brush. And make sure that the brush is clean. Make sure you don't have any color right here. Then we have two options right here which say load the brush after each and every stroke. And the second one is the opposite which is clean the brush after each and every stroke. So since we are going to be dealing with different colors within this photo, we just want to leave the brush clean because we are going to be dealing with different levels of color within the skin so just want photoshop to automatically clean the brush as you're trying to blend or even out the transitions within the skin so after selecting this option make sure the weight is nine so you may be looking at different settings for the mixer brush tool on youtube so usually i'm going to give you the settings i prefer to use but if i told you know any other settings you can use those because the very first step which was essential for this tutorial we already got that so just go with what works best for you that is what i'm trying to mean so the weight is going to be nine percent the load of 75 the mix at 90 and the flow of 100 so since we're going to be mixing the colors in the low frequency layer make sure you don't check this option it says sample all layers because when you check this option it means that your brush is also going to be sampling information from all these layers. So let me show you that right now. Just going to zoom in slightly and I show you what it is going to do. So when you start painting in the image, just look at the brush creating other random textures because it is also copying information from the high frequency layer and painting it in the low frequency. That is why it is creating this roughness right here so i'm just going to undo that so make sure this option you say sample all layers is not checked because you only want to work with the low frequency layer and now when you're using the mixer brush tool you always have to ensure that you're seeing the areas you want to blend quite well so usually some people prefer to use hope layers and a hope layer is that layer that is going to help you see the unevenness or the inconsistencies within the skin tone transitions so usually some people create a black and white layer within their frequency separation actions so what they do they come and they select the high frequency layer and they simply come and create that black and white layer and if i told you purchase my actions this black and white layer is going to be in that action initially so i'm just going to come and what they do they just come and they play around with the values of the reds and yellows and darken that slightly and right now they can see where to blend or even out when they are trying to paint using the mixer brush tool but if at all you find this a little bit confusing you can delete the black and white layer and come back and select the low frequency layer and after creating that or selecting it you just come and simply turn off the high frequency layer so usually when you're mixing uh, the skin or the skin color or skin tones in your images you just want to look at what you're trying to work on precisely so if at all you leave the textures on that may be a little bit confusing because the eyes are going to be or get lost along the way but when you turn off the textures it means you're just going to be focused on the colors or the skin tones in the image so how to use the mixer brush tool so when you're using the mixer brush tool these are the shortcuts you have to use when you're using it so the open or the close bracket is going to increase 
the size of your mixer brush tool and the open bracket on the keyboard is going to basically decrease on the size of your mixer brush tool you can see i'm just decreasing my brush so that is how to increase or decrease on the size of your mixer brush tool and if at all your mixer brush tool is showing uh this plus icon make sure you press the caps key or the caps lock key on the keyboard and that is going to remove the cross and you'll have it looking like this so as you're using a mixer brush to always keep on playing with different sizes of the mixer brush tool depending on how small or how big the area you're trying to work on so let's just start doing this and as you're working on the image make sure you don't zoom it all the way in because when you do this you're not going to be seeing the uneven skin tone positions and you may have or you'll have to mess up the image along the way so make sure you work or look at the image from a distance so that looks fine so how to use it you can see these colors and we have to move the mr brush tool the way an area is shaped you can see the forehead is moving in this kind of arch i can call it an arch format shape yeah just like that it's just like an end so you have to move your brush strokes in this kind of format so that you don't mess up the original face or the facial structure of your subject so let me show you how this does so to use the mixer brush tool i'm just going to left click and i'm going to be following this direction just look at the strokes i'm making just look at that and just follow that direction and mix colors that are looking alike so you don't have to make one stroke from this direction to this side make sure you make small small strokes but that stroke should always follow they should always follow the shape of the area you're trying to work on just look at my small strokes they are still following this kind of dome shape because the forehead is shaped in that kind of uh, direction just take that into consideration just move them like that and you can see we are not messing up the original facial structure of our model you can see the direction in which i'm taking the mr brush tool so if i you want to see the progress you can come and turn on the texture layer and simply turn this on and off or the overall frequency separation group on and off and you can see that we still have the textures intact in the image so Come back and turn this off by clicking on the visibility icon and with the low frequency layer selected you can see right now this area is shaped in an up down kind of direction so meaning i have to move my mixer brush tool in the same direction just like that and paint the colors that are looking alike so i'm basically blending the colors that are looking alike and where those colors are transitioning into another color i'm going to come and paint that border just like that just look at the shadow i'm just going to paint the shadows alone but i am still following the direction of that area so when it comes to the nose area let me show you this in practical sense so you can see that we have a different color in the highlights and in the shadow areas on the or on both sides of the nose so i'm just going to reduce on the size of my mr brush tool by using the brackets on the keyboard and get a reasonable brush size and left click and mix the shadows right here so i'm not moving my brush to the highlights i'm just going to follow the direction because the nose is shaped in an up down kind of direction just like that i'm going to come to this other side of the shadows and move my mixer brush tool in that direction and when i feel like i want to work on the highlight of the nose reduce on the size and just come and paint right there and i'm just going to also work on this area you can see i'm moving my brush in the direction of how that area is shaped so basically that is how you can move your brush you can see in this area i'm just going to move my brush in this kind of movement and you can see it retains the original facial structure of our subject so let's see the before and after for what we have just done and turn on the texture layer and you can see the before 
and after before after we have retained the textures or the details in the image but we have as well worked on the blending of the skin tones using the Mesa brush tool so you can go ahead working on different areas until when you feel like you have the right and desirable results from your mixer brush tool process of skin retouching using frequent separation so basically this is it for this tutorial and if at all you have loved this don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you are watching and, and you're not a subscriber yet ronix from ronix photography and i'll see you in yet another tutorial. and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating